Hi, I'm James from Portainer, and in this video I'm going to talk about the new features in version 2.33 of Portainer. 2.33 is a long-term support or LTS release. LTS releases are meant to be production-ready versions that you can safely run on your mission-critical infrastructure. The 2.33 LTS release includes all the new features and fixes included in the previous STS releases from 2.28 all the way through to 2.32, as well as work to make those fixes rock solid. You can learn more about our release process in the lifecycle policy documentation, there's a link in the video description. So for those of you that have already used the STS releases, there might not be many new features here for you. But if you're coming from our previous LTS release, 2.27, then there's a lot to cover, so let's dive in. The first change you'll notice in this release is a new look. We've updated and modernized the Portana branding alongside this release, both in the application and on our website. We launched this new look in 2.32, and now we've brought it into our LTS release. These are the first iterations of this new branding, so expect to see more adjustments to this in the future. We introduced a new experimental feature in 2.32, Observability, and this feature is now available within the LTS stream as well. With this prototype feature, you can set up notifications to be sent on various conditions affecting your environments through methods like Slack notifications, email, or triggering a webhook. This feature is very much an experimental feature, so we highly advise against enabling this on a production environment. But if you do try it out, we're keen to get your feedback around what we can add or improve with it in future releases. For Kubernetes users, 2.33 brings a brand new view of Helm deployments to Portana. Clicking on a Helm deployment within the Applications list takes you to the new Helm Details page, which provides a ton of information about the deployment status and configuration. Here you can see the history of a Helm deployment through the Revisions list, upgrade your chart version, and roll back to a previous revision if things go wrong. You can now also compare the configuration between the current deployment and previous revisions to see exactly what has changed between deployments. We've expanded the options available when deploying a Helm chart from a repository. You can now choose the repository to list charts from when deploying an app, choose the specific version of a Helm chart to deploy, and more easily make changes to any default values using the comparison display. We've also streamlined the way that we retrieve charts from Helm repositories to improve load times, and we've added functionality around Helm chart versions to allow you to manually refresh the version list on demand. You can now also select chart sources for your deployments, allowing you to easily track where they came from and what changes you've made to the configuration compared to upstream sources. Behind the scenes, we've switched to integrating the Helm SDK with Portana rather than our previous method of calling the Helm binary. Like the move away from the Docker Compose binary in previous versions, this change means one less vector for CVEs, as well as improved performance and functionality. This release introduces support for OCI format Helm charts through OCI registries. These registries are configured in the same way as image registries, and any registries you currently have configured that contain OCI charts will appear in the new Helm chart source dropdown when creating a deployment from Helm. There's a new RBAC role for Kubernetes users in this release, the namespace operator. This role has the same permissions as the standard operator role, but applied specifically to assigned namespaces instead of the entire cluster. This provides additional flexibility to administrators when providing access to resources on clusters. For Edge users, this release sees an overhaul of the update and rollback functionality for Edge devices. We've refreshed the UI and expanded the Schedule Detail view to provide much more information, including per-device status reports, so you can confirm that all devices in the group were updated as expected. This release also brings a number of updates to our MTLS functionality. We've added a new icon for environments on the dashboard that indicates the MTLS status where relevant. We've also improved the ability to view and manage your MTLS certificates from the UI rather than just the CLI, as well as fixed a few MTLS related bugs. You can now view details of your MTLS certificates within the UI from the Edge Compute settings as well as the MTLS status and any errors on individual environments from the homepage. For Docker users, to help ensure your stack files are valid when being written and before deployment, we've introduced code completion and validation functionality to the web editor. If you've used Visual Studio Code or other IDEs that provide code hints, you'll be familiar with this kind of feature. At present, this functionality is available for Docker Compose only, but we hope to extend this to include validation for Kubernetes manifests in a future release. Portainer now supports Kerberos when configuring Active Directory authentication. You can choose between simple and Kerberos bindings and configure the connection as required. 
With every release we try to make using Portainer more responsive and performant, and this release is no exception. We've migrated more of our views to the React framework and have made changes to how often we pull raw Docker snapshots, resulting in significantly faster load times. We've also made some adjustments to how systems work to reduce double handling of data, and in some cases drastically improve the load time of elements and data. These are the big features and changes in 2.33, but there's also a ton of other changes and fixes in this release. Have a look at our release notes for the full list of changes. If you're doing a fresh install of Portainer on a production environment, I'd recommend working through our best practice install guide in Portainer Academy at academy.portainer.io. This will guide you through what you need to run Portainer, how to install it, as well as what we'd recommend for production setups. For a quicker setup process, you can use our documentation at docs.portainer.io. Upgrade guides for both CE and BE are also available in our documentation, as well as instructions for upgrading from CE to BE. Thanks for watching. I hope I've been able to show you some of the new features and updates in Portainer 233. If you do have any questions, need help, or would like more information on anything I've talked about here, please check out our documentation, join our community support channels, or get in touch directly.